What's up, America? Chicago, world, YouTube, what up? It's cold as balls, um, which is why I'm wearing a knit cap indoors. Um, it was like negative 30 degrees, like with the wind chill yesterday, um, or real feel, whatever that is, whatever meteorologists created to make us feel worse about our lives. Uh, <laughs> so I didn't go... I did not go outside yesterday. Uh, I had to do my laundry, though. And so as soon as I got in the hallway, you could see your breath, which is no bueno. Uh, but heat wave next week, right? 35 degrees Friday and Saturday. Open invite to the beach. Uh, wear your shorts. Um, sad but true. Anyway, these are getting longer and longer. And I'm sure there's a that's what she said joke in there somewhere. But uh, let's, let's, let's keep this. Let's keep this one a little bit shorter. Um, I know the last video update I did was like 28 minutes, and no one's going to sit there and watch that. So let's get into it. This week, interesting week, uh, full week. Um, if you watched the video a week back, or if you didn't, I'll fill you in. Uh, I was going to do seven full days of training uh, this week, and I got um, pretty excited because I'm like, oh, I'm losing a lot of weight. I'm, um, I could add calories back. And uh, I'll throw this up on your screen right now. Brace yourself. Neon yellow. There it is. Okay. Um, so starting the week out at 179.6, I'm like, oh, cool. I could add calories back because I'm losing weight really fast. And um, that was a good thought in theory. But in practice, um, as you see by the end of the week, the average uh, rate of uh, or my average weight per week still decreased by maybe half a pound. It went down from 183. It's the number in italics, 183.7 to 183.3. And that's the trend we like to see continue going. The average weight continue to drop because you will have fluctuations. But the 179.6 ended up being uh, a false positive. And what do I mean by that? So these past couple Sundays, or every Sunday I've been on this prep, and I don't know why I used air quotes because this is a real thing, um, protein sparing modified fast. You've heard me talk a lot about that. The idea behind that, reduce your calories on one day and slide more of your weekly allowance, you know, um, because it's, it's good to view uh, energy as an allowance sometimes. Slide your allowance to where it would make, pay the most dividends, right? Which would be training days. So I've been doing that and my mindset through that um, was like, oh, if you could just make the deficit as big as possible while keeping your protein there, you're good. And so what that did, the past couple Sundays, I've been experiencing three, four pound drops uh, because I was literally just drinking protein shakes. And I was discussing this, this uh, idea with um, some members of the Bayesian Bodybuilding PT course group. Shouts out to you guys. Um, and we were tossing around best practices for a PSMF acronyms. Um, and yeah, yeah, protein shakes, three of them, not, not great. Uh, <laughs> uh, because you're missing out on fiber, you're missing out on vitamins, micronutrients, yada, yada, yada. So I decided to, uh, ditch the three protein shakes a day idea because it ended up giving me a couple false positives. <laughs> And what do I mean by that? Well, the last couple of weeks, uh, I would get that big drop following Sunday into Monday. But then you see, even in this week, um, my weight was, scale weight was going up all the way to, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Even on Thursday, it was going up. Um, and I think that's kind of like a rebound effect from, <clears throat> uh, from, not from Sunday in and of itself, but I think... So I set the numbers. I'm like, oh, I lost so much weight, which means I have to add X amount of calories back in. When in reality, that was a temporary low. That wasn't like a, a, a real um, indication of where my scale weight really was, uh, which is what I mean by false positive. So I re-added too many calories. Um, and by the end of this, or this morning, uh, developing story literally 30 minutes ago I stepped on my scale and I was 183 and that's even after yesterday doing a whole foods version not the store literal whole foods version of um, a protein sparing modified fast where I only really had you see over there um, 
1300 calories and I did not drop anything on the scale, which was really interesting. Um, not really sure what's going on there. Um, but this is what this is for is troubleshooting. Uh, so just so I could take this off your screen, uh, I'll get through the rest of the results. So, uh, still trending in the right direction, even though this week was a little, a little strange in terms of, um, uh, markers that ended up. So the goal was to drop um, down to roughly, based on the Monday reading, it was uh, my goal weight loss was another pound and a third, 1.3 pounds, down to 178.3. That did not happen. Uh, like I said, at 183. So a little bump in the road in terms of scale weight, but that's not all that matters. Uh, as you see over there, 101.9% means I gained 1.9% of body weight, uh, which is a really interesting thing. I have another uh, picture, screenshot, whatever, that I'm going to put up next that shows where my maintenance level is, and I think I have, like, the world's most adaptive metabolism because it's, like, been cut in a third in three weeks. Anyway, so the rest of these numbers here, uh, I did drop 0.1% of body fat, which, again, take it with a grain of salt. That uh, little handheld uh, measurement device I had isn't um, industry standard, whatever. Um, that lead that led to um, a, a pretty sizable. If you go by these numbers, a pretty sizable gain in in muscle mass, uh, with a concurrent gain in um, maybe half a pound of fat there. Um, which is also interesting because training this week uh, there were. You know, my back uh, and elbow were both bugging me, so I didn't, um, I was messing around with different exercises trying to accommodate both little uh, nagging injuries, and so I wasn't getting, I wasn't getting in, getting the work done, getting out as, as I would like to do. I was toying around with, oh, maybe this um, angle on the bench feels better for my elbow, maybe this machine, you know, feels better for my joints, yada, 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 and I was testing a lot of different stuff out. We'll also get to that later, but I... Uh, I think that might have played a role. I don't think I was utilizing as much energy in the gym um, as I thought I was. Um, but still, I uh, ended up gaining three pounds of muscle in a week. Again, take that with a grain of salt. That's just what these numbers say, and these are the numbers I'm going by. So uh, I could live with that. I could also live with the idea that um, my waistline is, is continuing to go down, and on average that has been dropping half an inch a week without fail for the past four weeks now, which is bueno. Um, and then you see over there um, my, my macros on the right um, average just over 100 grams of fat, just under 200 grams of carbs, and um, – People might be ready to point out, oh, well, you increase your carbs, carbs are the culprit. Not necessarily. Um, and then keeping the fiber up as well as the protein right there. Um, yeah, let me put that next one up that I said was pretty interesting about my maintenance. It's not neon, so it'll give your eyes a break. A uh, uh, quick note on the carbs. Yeah, you see. Okay, so here you see week one, two, three. Um, Kept carbs around the same for the first two weeks, and then there's about an extra 50 or 60 there in week three. Um, I think it's just a matter that I overestimated how much energy I needed to put back in my diet. Um, nothing inherently wrong with having more carbs. Um, they, they're providing energy, and I'm, I'm slotting them around my workout um, for the most part. Uh, and another change worth... worth bleh, yeah. Worth mentioning for my diet is I've moved um, a meal down to kind of construct an intermittent, fa intermittent fasting protocol. Uh, so I wake up at 9. My first meal is at, it used to be at 11. Now it's at 1 because I feel like that meal at 11 and that gap between 11 and 5 when I had my next meal was comparatively suckier, technical term, suckier to deal with than just waiting another two hours on the front end um, to have that first meal. So first meal at one, second meal at five, get in the gym and train it from 6.30 to 8, 8.15-ish, and then have that last meal at, you know, quarter to nine, nine. So the, the meals are all about four hours apart. And what I'm doing there is keeping that first meal 
Um, basically just protein and fiber and uh, maybe a little bit of fat. Yeah, it's like three eggs, a bag of broccoli, and fish oil for my first meal. Um, breakfast of champions. <laughs> uh, and then, then the mass chunk of, um, I believe, protein's pretty well distributed. It's like 50 grams before my workout, 75 grams after. Uh, carbs are about 50 grams before workout and like 120, 130 after. Fat is about 55 pre-workout, 40 post. So it's distributed pretty well, and over the course of the day, it's trending upwards uh, along with my activity, and that's just really good practice if you want um, to basically optimize your performance in the, in the weight room. Just kind of throw your energy around the, around the training session, and that's going to be doubly important if you're more advanced. Um, not saying I'm super advanced, but I'm I've been in the in the game long enough to where it matters. Anyway, um, so yeah, um, I added about 300 calories back on a daily basis on average, and that ended up you see all the way to the right um, where it's like maintenance. That's a calculated maintenance. I got a maintenance calculator in the um, Bayesian Bodybuilding PT course, uh, which is just fun to play around with. And you enter, you know, um, based if you, if you have a body composition tracker like I do, you enter your numbers and it shows you, in theory, for that block of time, what your energy balance is at and where your maintenance calorie level was. So um, that first week, when I was still carrying a, a good chunk of water weight and weight from the holiday and from the cruise and whatnot, um, I had about 14,000 calories that week and I lost a crap load of weight. Um, and so my maintenance based, based on the amount of weight I lost and the composition of the weight I lost, my maintenance was up near 40,000 calories. So in theory, I could have eaten double that and still lost weight. Now, uh, this is interesting to note. I ate fewer calories the following week ended up losing less weight. Um, and you see my maintenance dropped by about, calculated, by about 12,000. And then this week, I ended up eating more calories, which was still a projected 20% deficit. I still base all my numbers on a 20% on a deficit going into the following week because that's – one day I really hope that 20% that deficit gonna, is going to get me that, you know, 1.7% weight change rate that um, that I'm, I'm looking for, but uh, may, maybe it's time to change that number two. Um, but yeah, so 16,000 calories, which apparently in either of the first two weeks would have uh, been just fine to lose weight. Uh, but in this week, uh, it looks like my metabolism is continuing to adapt downwards. This, I think, um, what the phenomenon I'm, I'm seeing here is is a highly adaptive metabolism. I think I've explained this in, in previous videos, but just a quick um, rehashing is that you have um, your metabolism, your factors of your metabolism are gonna are gonna decrease in a deficit regardless, right? You you expect a, a sort of downregulation of um, thermic effect of food simply because you're eating less food, basal metabolic rate because you have less mass you're carrying, uh, less spontaneous activity because your body's in a deficit and you're, you're not, um, you don't have like energy just to spare on fidgeting and whatnot. Um, all of these will track downwards to an extent in everybody. The thing is, there are some people on two sides of how adaptive their metabolism may be. Um, so you got two people taking in 2,000 calories a day, which means 14,000 calories a week, and then you employ a 20% deficit for both of them, meaning you take 200 calories out. Now they're both eating 1,800 calories. If you have someone with a very um, static metabolism, they will be able to diet down on 1,800 calories if their maintenance was 2,000 for a pretty substantial amount of time. So there are some people that you notice that you just make that one initial 
adjustment to their diet and they'll be able to squeeze, you know, X amount of weeks of progress out of it. And a, any further drop uh, in calories would result in muscle wasting. You're going to be losing weight too fast. On the other hand, um, someone with a very adaptive metabolism might not lose any weight um, with that 200 calorie drop or very little um, because their metabolism responded in a way to where their maintenance is actually now lower than what that 2000 was. Um, so in practice, a, what you calculated was a 20% deficit was more like a 5% deficit because your metabolism adapted. So, um, knowing that I might actually change up my week ahead, seeing how my maintenance has been adapting very fast. Um, knowing that I only have about, you know, maybe 12,000 calories to deal with here as a maintenance level. Um, yeah, that, that, that might be a worthwhile change going forward. I'm glad I talked that out. So next week, um, I don't want to make any changes too drastically, but I mean, if my maintenance is right around 12,000 calories, great. We're already in uh, we're already in uh, super hard diet mode. Anyway, let's get that off your screen. Uh, final thing I want to talk about is training. I mentioned that earlier. Uh, still getting in six days a week, and this week, Sunday is Christmas. I'm expecting the gym to be closed, uh, and also I have plans on Christmas. Um, so six days again. Uh, and so I'm doing an ABC split still, which is three microcycles and a macrocycle, whatever, forget I said that. Three workouts repeating, so I do two, both, or two of each session, A, B, and C, in a week. And they've been looking slightly different uh, because, like I said, I've been playing with things that accommodate my, sh my, uh, my elbow, my back. Um, let me put that up there here. Um, so all the green is good, which I like to just take a step back and see how much green there is, and that that's good to see that there's more green than yellow, and definitely more green and yellow than red. Red means um, I did not exceed the prior week's benchmark. So, uh, yeah, and the squats, um, yeah, that number, uh, <laughs> I'm not putting up 370 by 10 on squats. That was a Squat Pro machine, which mimics the movement of the squat but keeps you more vertical. Uh, you could handle some pretty, pretty heavy weight on that, relatively speaking, compared to your squat. And I wanted to do that because I have a pair of lifting shoes. Uh, how do you say it? Romeleos? Romeleos? Rom Rom whatever. The cool ones from Nike. And they're a sick colorway. Uh, can't wait to get those. But I'm going to hold out on barbell squatting until I get those shoes, which hopefully is within the week. Um so I'm going to be sticking to the squat pro, and I just wanted to uh, wanted to be tracking there. I'm not. I didn't all of a sudden become uh, Chris Craft. Shouts out C3 Muscle. Um, then, uh, yeah, adding a lot more shrugs back in. Shruggy. Uh, <laughs> adding more shrugs back in. Uh, six sets. Going to be boring. Whatever. Uh, and uh, you see, I'm adding chains to a lot of my exercises. Let me wrap this up. Uh, chains accommodate resistance, better uh, matching the exercise to the strength curve, um, which is just going to allow you to produce more fo force over the entire movement. Um, kind of the same idea behind cables, which is like accommodating resistance as well. Uh, so yeah, everything there is still trending up pretty well. Um, I'm still adding weight pretty much every session. And that was, I guess, to be expected there in this past week where I added a little bit too many calories. So I'm going to make those adjustments. I'm going to drop calories by at least 100 or 200 a day. Excuse me. Um, and see where that goes. And um, I, I, I hope it's not the case that my metabolism, metabolism keeps adapting downward, but we'll see. We'll toy with that. Um, Got to make... I've got to fill out my macros and then go shopping accordingly, which is something I recommend all of you do. Um, shop based off your macros and shop based on specific sets of time. Um, so then you don't have more food than you actually need. Um, pro tip. <laughs> uh, yeah, before I wrap things up, happy holidays to everyone. Christmas uh, this week. Um, 
Hope you enjoy it. Christmas Eve, if that's your thing, Christmas Eve, Christmas, uh, a very merry time indeed. Um, I just feel like it's been Christmas since Halloween. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, happy holidays, guys. I'm going to be coming out with a lot more free stuff. Um, today's the launch of my newsletter, which this will appear as a link in the newsletter. Uh, it's free, uh, so go ahead and sign up for that. You'll also get a free PDF. Highlighting some big mistakes that people make in 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 pursuit of their body composition goals. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for more stuff. I'm coming out with a new article in the newsletter. Um, coaching openings still available. <laughs> uh, look, I'm I'm looking for anyone who is who's serious. Anyone who, um, Anyone who is, is going to take the work we do together and, and, and utilize it properly, because I, I've done some, some free consulting, some free work for some people, and, and they'll, be, they'll be all about it the day we do it, and then I'll never hear back from them, uh, which, is, which, you know, it, it comments nothing on them in a personal, in a personal respect, um, but uh, it's it just not how I, how I want to allocate my time if this is what I plan on doing for my career. You know, uh, I want to have, you know, the week by week feedback. I want to have things to change and, and at, at the rate I'm, I'm offering it right now, this is steel. Um, and you know, I, I, am considering even dropping it a little more or, do, or doing just free stuff to get some results under my belt. Um, but it, ideally I don't need to do that. Um, hopefully around the new year, maybe it'll pick up with resolutions and whatnot, but, uh, you know, I'm still going to keep moving forward, producing content, getting free stuff out to you guys, increasing value and, uh, troubleshooting my own, my own progress. Um, because at the end of the day, that's, uh, going to pay dividends in terms of my business, my, my, wow, I cannot talk on a Monday for my business as well. So that said, um, Check out my newsletter, check out this video, check out my new article. Uh, it's about how diet relates to sleep quality. Uh, Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and um, yeah, go forth and prosper. I've been saying that too often. I need, I need something to close. Oh, yeah, hashtag nothing but gains, Jack. <laughs> uh, one day I'm going to explain that to everybody. Uh, uh, I could do it now. Um, so me and Chris, uh, shout out to Chris Kraft coming up. He's all over this video. Um, <laughs> we're at, we're in, we're at quads. We're squatting, and we're, he's 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 uh, in between sets. He's talking about man, where should I go eat afterwards? Am I going to Chick Fil A? Am I going to Chipotle? Am I going? I'm like go everywhere, man. Go to all of them. He's like, yeah, you right. Ain't nothing but gains, Jack. <laughs> so uh, yeah, hashtag NBGJ. <laughs> it's a mouthful, but. Uh, Nothing but gains, Jack. That's what it is. Let's get it trending. <laughs> All right, well.